Last I told you, you could use n-gons on curved surfaces in sub-D modeling. On this shape, we have a massive n-gon with a triangle directly above it, but when we subdivide, we get a fully quad-based mesh devoid of distortions or shading artifacts. But why is this? Well, triangles and n-gons will always subdivide into quads and generate their own flow of topology, referred to as polyflow or more commonly known as edge flow. In this instance, the n-gon subdivides to provide polyflow that supports the upper and lower edges of the model, as well as the rounded corner. So now that we've established the basics of n-gons on curved surfaces, let's look at a slightly more complex example that I got from Jordan Kane. This corner intersection between the circle and the rectangular extrusion is defined by an n-gon that directs the flow of topology up and around the edge of the extrusion and doesn't distort the surface normals. As an added benefit, we also have full control over the placement of the corner through the use of an edge slide that will subsequently maintain consistent shading on the outer edge. Compared to an all quads based solution, we lack the same level of control as defined by the polyflow. We also can't as easily adjust the corner position without creating inconsistent shading on the outer edge. So I'm not here to tell you that n-gons are better than quads, but I am saying that n-gons have utility in sub-D modeling and can be used to great effect to improve your modeling capabilities. For a deep dive into n-gons and their uses within sub-D modeling, you can find my full length discussion over on YouTube with practical modeling examples and an explanation for how they triangulate and work in game asset modeling with UVs and normal baking.